Hello. If this is the third video in my series on how to cut down on those unwanted pounds, especially as we're heading into summer and want to look our best on the beach, I'm going to give you two very simple but powerful ways of losing weight without actually ever realising it. Both the experiments I'm going to describe are based on research I carried out with my physiologist colleague, Dr. Margaret Leach, for our latest book, Fat Planet. In this book, we explain the reasons why so many of us overeat and how best to cut down on the amounts we eat. In the first of these studies, we compared drinking from short, wide tumblers with people who drank from tall, narrow tumblers. To do this, we invited a group of volunteers to a London pub and told them they were going to take part in a focus group on the effects of alcohol on the body. Now, this was just the cover story. The real experiment occurred when I invited them individually into a separate room and asked them to pour a shot of coloured liquid into either a short, fat tumbler or a tall, narrow one. When all my volunteers had completed this task, the total amount poured into each type of tumbler was measured. The results were compelling. Those using the tall, narrow tumblers had poured less than half those using the short, wide glasses, 397 millilitres against 796 millilitres. So what would that difference translate into unwanted calories? Well, as the table shows, the number of calories in different drinks varies considerably from 250 per 100 grams of whiskey to 43 for the same amount of beer. Now, the important thing to remember here is that these are what we call empty calories. This means they have little or no nutritional benefit. So, consuming extra calories by drinking can lead to weight gain. My first tip for avoiding these unwanted pounds is always to use tall, narrow glasses rather than the shorter, wider ones, and that will help you drink less. The second question we asked ourselves is, why do we tend to eat more than we actually need? Why do we overeat? Well, as with the tumblers, when we drink, we eat with our eyes as much as with our stomachs. When it comes to the food we see, we feel tempted by it. We are primed, as a psychologist would say, by the sight of the food we eat. That occurs even if we're not particularly hungry. But we can use the fact that we eat with our eyes to keep track of what we eat by keeping the evidence of what we've eaten in front of us. And this can tell your brain that you really don't need any more. By looking at the visual evidence, you actually switch yourself into a mindful state and therefore you're able to take more conscious control over the amount you're eating. To put this to the test, we invited members of the public to see a comedy show being recorded for television in a London pub. Now, as they watched the show, they were served platefuls of delicious barbecue chicken wings and were invited to eat as many as they liked. What they didn't know was that my team and I would be monitoring exactly how many chicken wings they ate. We secretly divided the audience into two groups. One group had the remains of their chicken wings cleared away by the waiting staff as soon as they'd eaten them. This meant that the evidence of their consumption was rapidly removed. The other group continued to eat with all the evidence of what they'd already eaten left on the plate in front of them. What my team and I expected to happen is that when we can see how much we've eaten, we reduce our consumption, while out of sight is very much out of mind. When we can't see the food we've eaten, we will carry on gorging. And this is exactly what our study found. The group who had the food left in front of them and could therefore keep a track on how much they were eating consumed far fewer chicken wings than the group whose plate was cleared away so they had no visual evidence of what they'd eaten. They consumed a grand total of 70 chicken wings between them compared with just 41 by the group whose plate was left in front of them. This meant that when evidence of their consumption was removed, it led to them eating almost 
80% more food. As one of our diners told me, I just kept on eating. Each time my plate was cleared away, I was actually quite relieved. I was conscious my plate was filling up more than the person I was sitting next to. So what practical lessons can we learn from this? Well, we can change our behaviour by keeping the food we've already eaten, the remains of the food we've already eaten, just in front of us rather than having it cleared away. So, for example, if you're eating sweets, keep the wrappers in front of you. When you're having a meal, leave the debris on your plate. If you're drinking, leave the empty bottles on the table in front of you. Give yourself visual clues to help you track what you're eating and you'll eat less. These two studies, and others to which I'll be referring in later dieting videos, were sponsored by the British television station Channel 4 as part of their Secret Eater series. All these are now available on YouTube and very well worthwhile watching if you want to learn why we put on weight and what we can do about it. In my next video, I'll be looking at two further overeating traps, traps we can easily fall into and by doing so put on weight without ever realising it. Well, thank you for watching and do please subscribe if you want to keep up to date with the work and practical suggestions of Dan and myself to help you change your life by changing your mind. Mm -hmm.